Hey everyone, I'm Cryptic Fox, and today we're talking about temperature management in your colony and oxygen not included. Before we can start to effectively manage the temperatures within your colony, both the cold temperatures and the hot temperatures, you first have to understand where they're coming from. The main starting area that your, your colony begins in will start off in a temperate range, which is around 19 to 20 degrees Celsius. That's very comfortable for your duplicants, and it's really that middle of the road range where things aren't hot and they aren't, ho aren't cold. As you move out of that main starting area, though, you'll start to, to work your way into new biomes, the swamp biome, the ice biome, and what have you. If you look at your temperature overlay, you can see that there, there are different temperatures for each of the different biomes. The swamp biome, for example, tends to range between warm and hot. The ice biome, of course, ranges between chilled and cold. If we get over to the purple biome, I don't know what they call it, but it's basically purple and will often be populated by chlorine gas and hydrogen gas. This one tends to be more on the hot side, bordering on scorching. And then lastly, you have your magma biome. The magma biome is definitely the hottest, as it has pockets of magma and steam that are contained within it. In addition to the general temperature variances that you get within the different biomes, there's also special features such as the steam geyser, which produces uh, both steam and water at very high temperatures. As you can see, this particular geyser that's located just at the lower left of my colony is running around uh, 58, 59 degrees Celsius, which is extremely hot, too hot for the duplicants, in fact. And it radiates out that heat in the whole area around it. Beyond environmental factors, you have lots of machines that you're, you're creating that are producing heat also. As a general rule, anything that produces electricity or runs on electricity is going to have heat associated with it. Some of the highest heat producing machines you can have are the coal generators, which produce 45 watts of heat while they're operational, and that's definitely very hot. Batteries. The large battery, which produces 6.25 watts of heat. Power transformers, hydrogen generators air scrubbers, and actually one of the second hottest objects, objects you can have is the water purifier, which produces 20 watts of heat. All of these machines that you might have running within your colony are going to start to change that temperature in that core area. If you don't control that temperature, things can get really uncomfortable for your duplicants, even catastrophic. When the machines get super hot, they start to scald the duplicants when they get too close to them. They damage other things that are around them. They damage the machine itself, and your colonists have to, and your duplicants have to constantly repair them. So you want to try to get control of those temperatures as quickly as possible, and the easiest way to do that is by not letting them overheat in the first place. The cold biome is where you want to build any machine that's going to produce a large amount of heat. The supercomputer, which can scald your duplicate if it gets too hot while they're doing research. The coal power generator, which produces lots of heat constantly while it's running. Water purifier, if it's an option you can have in that area. But also, the cold doesn't necessarily restrict itself to specifically the ice biome. It'll actually radiate ar out around the edges of the ice biome as well into the, into the corresponding area. In this case, it's radiating into, into the main part of my colony where I've actually done all my building. So as you can see, some of these objects aren't actually in the cold biome, but they are benefiting from that cold. This power transformer, for example, you can see is sitting in a cold area, so it's staying cold while it operates. Well, these two power transformers are located in an area that's not as cold. This is just a temperate area, and these ones are running much warmer. These coal generators have been running for my colony for uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of, I think, 50 or 60 cycles. And you can see they're still they're still run, sitting nice and blue. And I never have to worry about them getting damaged or overheating and scalding somebody. There are lots of different materials you could build things out of in the game. And those materials also have different thermal properties. For example, if you look at Wolframite, which can be found in the cold biome, it has a thermal conductivity of 15 watts per meter kelvin. That thermal conductivity decides how readily the material passes heat through it. Wolframite has the highest thermal conductivity and can be useful for making things like heat sinks. As you can see in the cold biome, I built metal floors that act as a heat sink for some of the heat that's coming out of the machines. These aren't strictly necessary when you look at the setting of the cold biome just because of the extreme low temperature. However, it can be useful in other areas if you have to build something that can produce heat in, in the main part of your, your colony. For example, some of the first items you're going to interact with as a, as a new colony are the tiny battery, the manual generator, and the micro musher. All three of these produce heat. Now, these items I haven't been using very much, so they're still sitting nice and cool. Even this battery, which has been running, but is benefiting from being close to the cold biome and getting some of that radiated cold. But when you're first starting out, you probably have these things right in the middle of your colony and they're producing heat. 
Sometimes when you, if you can get the gas permeable tiles underneath that are made out of wolframite, that can help to, to offset some of that heat. As you're starting off your colony, you're going to have both your research station and your supercomputer. The supercomputer gets extremely hot. Once you're finished your research, ideally, uh, you'll want to have your supercomputer built in the, in the cold biome. Uh, but ideally, you want to destroy those machines so they're not producing any additional heat within your colony or, or consuming any unnecessary energy. I generally try to control the, the temperature of the, the oxygen within my colony by having my oxygen generation room located next to the cold biome. Not necessarily right in it, but close enough to it that it's benefiting from the cold radiating out of it. This ensures that as I'm producing oxygen, the machines that are running in this room stay nice and cool, so the oxygen stays cool, and then when I pump that out to the greater proportion of my colony, the rest of the colony will stay nice and cool as well as it's well, uh, well oxygenated. There are times where that temperature variance between the two different biomes is going to be very important to control. For example, with this steam geyser that's located down in the lower part of my colony, it's producing a lot of heat in the surrounding area, and the water it's producing is also very high heat also. So it's important to make use of things like the insulated tile in order to separate your colony from those heat sources. This is again where thermal conductivity plays a big part, because the different types of materials you use to make the insulated tile will have a different thermal property. For example, if you make this tile out of sandstone, it's going to have a 2.9 watts per meter Kelvin uh, thermal conductivity rating, which isn't, isn't exceptionally good. Igneous rock has a, a 2 watts per meter Kelvin, sedimentary rock again 2 watts per meter Kelvin, but some of the best material that you can use for insulation is the abyssalite. It actually has a 0 0.0001 watts per meter Kelvin, and if you're not super good at math, that's basically just an extraordinarily low number. It, in, for the most part, it doesn't conduct heat at all. So this makes for the ideal material to build your insulation out of. You may want to use this insulation to, to shield your colony from uh, from thermal factors that are outside of the colony in, in a different biome. In this case, I have it separating some of the cold biome and also separating some of this hot area that's being produced by the geyser. But you may also need it within your colony for areas which you're, you're, you're working with extreme temperatures. This room here, I'm working on growing some pinch of pepper plants. So I've been working on increasing the temperature to try to get it to the ideal range that's uh, that's perfect for the plants to grow. In this case, I'm trying to get up to temperatures that are in the neighborhood of 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. So we have the space heaters running to produce heat in that area, and it's getting much, much too warm for, uh, for a normal colonist to survive. By shielding this area with insulation, I'm ensuring that I'm not adversely affecting the temperature around this room. You can see it's it's roughly, roughly 5 degrees Celsius within this room right now and climbing. But in the surrounding areas, it's only around 20 degrees Celsius. If you're building machines that are, that are going to be producing a lot of heat, such as your coal power generator, the best thing you can make that machine out of is gold amalgam. Gold amalgam has an overheat be benefit of plus 5,000 percent. So anything you make out of it is going to go uh, will be able to run much, much more effectively without overheating. This is ideal for things like your water purifier that produces a lot of heat, your coal power generator, your hydrogen generators. Any other machine that you can ideally build out of gold amalgam will go a long way to help control your temperature. Really, there's just a few simple techniques to follow in order to help try and uh, control your temperatures within your colony. Keep heat producing machines away from the core part of the colony wherever possible, especially away from sleeping quarters because the uncomfortable temperatures can raise stress and make your duplicates unhappy. Build machines out of gold wherever possible to get the benefit of the overheat temperature. Make use of the cold biome for those machines that produce a large amount of heat. Build things like the supercomputer, the, the coal power generator, or any other machines that are going to produce a lot of heat into that area if, if at all possible. Take advantage of the temperatures that are near different biomes in order to save power. For example, using the cold to cool your air in order to, to control the temperature of the gases within your colony. If you need to cool an immediate area, Wheeze warts that you can harvest from the cold biome can be planted in the flower vase and, and placed in, in areas to try to control the temperature. One wheeze wart all by itself doesn't produce much of an effect, but multiple wheeze warts can have, uh, can have a compounding effect that can make things very cold. They are much better at cooling the gases in the air in a given area than they are at cooling specific machines, so just bear that in mind when you're using them. There are other machines you can use to control the temperature of gases within your, your colony as well. For example, in the utilities, you have the hydro fan that, will, that is operated by a duplicant and will, cool, and will chill the general area, producing heat around it by 80 watts. That's a significant amount. It, it works very well for gases, such as oxygen or uh, carbon dioxide or any other gases you're trying to cool. However, it doesn't have as ne nearly as strong of an effect on those machines that are actually producing the heat. So that's not necessarily going to be a perfect solution. 
Many people also use the thermal regulator to help control the temperature of the gases or oxygen in their colony. Simply pump the gas into the thermal regulator through the input. The gas that comes out on the other side will be 14 degrees Celsius cooler, so you can chain multiple pieces of these together if you need a, a very strong cooling effect. Or if you just need a little bit of a cooling effect, it can help maintain a, a balanced temperature for you. If push comes to shove and you can't keep a machine from overheating, liquid cooling is also a very viable option. Uh, you can run a pipe above the machine and have the water simply drip onto the machine or have it sitting in a small skim of water, and that will help to, to lower the temperature as well. In a pinch, that's the fastest way to cool down a machine that's been overheating so that it doesn't keep scalding your duplicates. This is not an exhaustive guide, but these are just a few tips to help you keep your colony cool and manage the temperatures that you have to deal with a little bit better. There are certainly more sophisticated techniques using things like the thermal regulator in order to super cool hydrogen gas, which has the lowest freezing temperature, and use that to radiate out cold into different areas for things like purifying uh, polluted oxygen and cooling off things that are super hot and that sort of that sort of an idea. However, if you're looking at this guide, you're probably looking for things that are a little bit more basic, and this is the best place to start. I hope you find this guide useful and it helps your colony manage the temperatures a little bit better. I'm as always Cryptic Fox. I'll see all of you next time.